And moving on to the next opponent, uh, you know, just got done having a small little practice out there with the guys, switched the schedule up a little bit. Based on it being uh, Thanksgiving week, so uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. But uh, th this is the best week of the year for a college football team. Um, you know, just uh, being able to eliminate distractions is, is, is good. Uh, not having school uh, uh, makes it easier from the scheduling point of view. So uh, being able to get these guys up here every morning uh, to feed them a little bit more than we normally can and, and meet and lift and practice and get them out of here at a decent time sets up good seeing how this game is uh, noon kick. Uh, should be used to noon kicks at this point, but it, I think it works out good from a scheduling point of view this, this, this week for all that. Growing up, being able to watch these games <clears throat> on Thanksgiving, on Thursday and Friday and Saturday, it's, it's, it's a great time of the year. So our guys are, uh, uh, you know, pretty excited about, you know, just being uh, uh, bowl eligible. Uh, you know, won three games in a row and have two more great opportunities ahead of us. So I'm going to keep moving forward, hopefully keep improving, and and uh, hopefully keep winning some ball games. Uh, overall, probably as healthy as we've been all year right now. Um, you know, everybody's kind of, uh, other than, uh, you know, obviously Carl, uh, everybody's uh, should be available to go this week. So uh, a couple of guys missed some time in the game, but... Part of that was uh, we were able to do it, um, you know, based on how the beginning part of the game went. Uh, we were comfortable being able to play uh, 60 some bodies. I think the total number was 62 or something. So almost everybody that traveled played, and uh, it was good to get those guys out there. But we're we're pretty healthy right now, and uh, looking for a pretty good uh, uh, pretty good week. <laughs> uh, Iowa State. Uh, you know, obviously understand what the situation is there with, with their football program. doesn't affect us uh, at all. Uh, I don't think it will affect them at all as far as how they play. The one thing that I've always uh, admired Paul Rhodes for is getting his team to play and never quit. It doesn't matter who they're playing. It doesn't matter where they're playing. It doesn't matter what their record is. Uh, their team always just keeps playing. They've always played with effort. They've always continue to play throughout the course of a season, continue to play throughout the course of a game. I would anticipate this game being no different. Uh, so I would, you know, expecting them to show up, and uh, if anything, we probably got to be <clears throat> a little bit on guard for, for you know, maybe, uh, you know, having a trick or two, which they're uh, a, a program that does that anyway. They, they fake a lot of stuff. They take chances on special teams, they, they do some trickery stuff on offense and take some chances on defense as well. So really doesn't change a whole lot with what our preparation is and what we're going to expect. Offensively, uh, Todd Sturdy's done a great job taking over their offense about six games ago, uh, made the quarterback switch with Lanning. I think he's a really good player, sits in the pocket, has good mobility, throws the ball, is accurate, strong arm. Um, you know, got three or four receivers that are that are really good players, uh, big dudes, same guys that we played against last year with the addition of Bundridge, who was hurt for him last year. He's a really good player, and then the freshman back Warren is is, is a difference maker. He's you know right there, top three, four in the conference, over 100 yards a game. He's a good player, and and bunch of seniors on the old line. Uh, they have five of their six guys up front, including their tight end, are all senior, seniors. So same guys that we faced the last couple of years. But they're moving the ball well, and they're, uh, they're, they're, they're doing a good job offensively. They, 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 they typically start fast and, and jump up on some teams they have pretty much each and every game. So we'll, we'll be, we'll be, on, on, we'll be uh, expecting them to start fast and, and, and not quit throughout the course of a game. Defensively, same guys, you know, that they, that the coaching-wise that they've had. Have switched up their scheme a little bit, but uh, have done that since game one this year. Um, you know, typical Iowa State defense, they, they're very sound. They don't take a, a, a ton of chances and mix things up too much, but uh, they're, they're very sound in what they do. Uh, you know, got a couple of new faces mixed in with a lot of the older guys that they've played, played with over uh, the last couple of years. Uh, we've, had, we've had very competitive games against them. Uh, and uh, our offense has got our, our work cut out for trying to figure out what these guys got going on. Special teams, solid in every phase. Uh, probably uh, top to bottom as good as any special teams as we've faced all year. 
you know, the one that stands out is their, their punt return. Their average a third in the country or something like that. But they uh, got a couple of good, good, good guys back there. Their scheme has been problematic over the last couple of years. They put two guys back there and try to, you know, spread you from, from sideline to sideline, um, you know, and, and do a good job with that. Uh, their coverage units are really good. Their punt team covers well. Their kickoff team covers well. Uh, and like I said, they'll take some chances, uh, so we need to be on high alert with that. So it's kind of the initial thoughts with Iowa State, uh, but uh, looking forward for a, 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 a good day for our seniors. Uh, you know, there'll be a lot of talk about these guys uh, and what they've done for, for the program over the last four years. This senior class uh, was instrumental in the transition into the Big 12. These guys have been there from day one of, of Big 12 play. So, um, you know, it, it's our job as coaches and players, not counting the seniors, uh, to put those seniors in a position to be able to enjoy their senior day. Uh, one last time on Mountaineer Field is going to be very important to these guys. It's going to be important to me to send them out on top uh, with, a, with a victory and be able to sing Country Roads here in the stadium one last time. So that gives us plenty of motivation to, to prepare the right way and to uh, play the right way as well. So, that I'll take some questions. You mentioned Iowa State starting fast. What enables some teams to be able to do that? Oh, I don't know. Uh, momentum's a good one on that. I mean, you get some momentum and they capitalize on it. Uh, you know, I, if, 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 if you knew the answer, everybody would do it. I don't know what the answer is to starting fast. There's been some games where we've started fast. There's been some games where we've had to settle in before before we got going so you know being prepared and being in the right frame of mind and catching some early breaks and capitalizing on it with uh, some momentum <clears throat> i don't know if there's a magic formula touched on the switch with the coordinator have you seen any change in what they've done since they made the switch offensively <laughs> nah you can't really change things too much you know i mean you got to Keep rolling with what you're doing. Maybe how it's called a little differently, but uh, they they look relatively the same. I I've seen them against you know I've studied their offense against Kansas and Texas Tech and TCU. You know the you know for earlier in the year when we were preparing for those teams, Iowa State had already played them, and they were one of the games that we would <clears throat> we would focus on. They're pretty similar to what we do. I mean they're getting. 11 personnel and play two backs and go 10 personnel and throw it and run it and all that. So they're, they're really pretty similar with what we do offensively. So, you know, I've, I've got a history with their coordinator. We've talked a lot, and uh, I, think he's, I think he's done a good job with them. Jayden, obviously, uh, you know it's a business with, with coaching, but, you know, it's also a fraternity. You know, Paul Rhodes, the guy who coaches in your home state. What, what was your reaction when you heard the news on Sunday? Yeah, I was surprised. I mean, I don't understand why it has to happen at this point, you know, but, uh, you know, we're, we're obviously more worried about what's going on here. And, you know, but uh, Paul's a good football coach. He's, you know, the, the head coaches hang out a little bit when, you know, different meetings and venues and stuff. And, you know, I've never worked with him, but he's a, he's a great guy, you know, and he's a good football coach. Brings a lot of energy to their – to their team and and is extremely uh, extremely competitive and a fiery guy, but uh, it is it's just part of the profession. I mean, you're seeing it. You know, this year is, seems like it could be, you know, you know, pretty 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 tough. You know, for a lot of coaches, but uh, you know, it, it can't affect what we're doing. Won't affect what we're doing. We'll keep moving forward, and they're just they're they're the next team on the schedule that we got to prepare for. Do you even mention the firing of the players at all? Is it something that's brought up? No, it's not something that affects us. I mean, it just, you know, it's just not. You can say, well, it's not fair or fair or whatever it is. I don't know. I mean, it's just that, that what's handling, what's happening there is going to happen there, you know. My job is to give our team information and, and what they need to, to be prepared to be able to uh, win the game this Saturday. So, you know, we, we've already met and talked about it, but that's it's not going to get it's not going to get brought up again. And. It doesn't need to be brought up to them with 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 y'all. It doesn't affect it doesn't affect what they do. That said, you have to be prepared for them to throw caution to the wind a little bit, saying, "Well, what the heck?" Oops. Well, that that was yeah, that that was my purpose of talking with them. You know, we met this morning and then practiced and met again on the field. But we understand that we need to be on high alert for them 
doing different things. You know, they don't have to be as cautious as, say, some teams would be. So we need to be on high alert for that. Be ready for anything. It's part of the preparation of getting ready to play a football game. You said everybody was, was probably able to play this weekend. How did Shelton bounce back? Oh, he's fine. He's fine. I guess the first time he ever got hit like that. Yeah, I went out there on the field and kind of looked at him and said, what's wrong? And he just said, I've never been hit like that. I said, well, just get up. You know, and he did. And he was fine. So he, 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 was, he was good out there today. Even practice today. Should be a, it should be closer. You know, I doubt at this point he can get into the starting lineup, you know, because of the switch and Marcel playing well and Marquise playing well. But, you know, ha having the depth is incredibly important. <laughs> you know, you, you um, obviously are like Tyler. You've talked a bunch about your guards, but I think Marquise has played the most snaps. He started in full tackle position. And here's I know he played really well. Um, not gotten a lot of recognition. Well, he looked really bad giving up that one sack or that one hit. Uh, you know, Mar Marquise is one of my favorite guys. I mean, he's been here for a long time. He's going on his fifth year, fifth year senior. Insp you know, inspirational guy. Is, is uh, got lots of energy. Um, you know, pr proud of the player that he's turned into. You know, so he has what a two-year starter now. So that, that's that's what you what you really want out of a lineman. You know, there's there's guys that. Are ready to play early and, and you know end up playing three and four years, but that's kind of rare, you know. So a guy like Marquise, you know, he's going to get his degree here in in December. You know, leave here. I know he wants to to try to play in the NFL, which you have that opportunity, and we'll leave an alumni of West Virginia University. So I'm I'm proud of where he's at. Uh, what did you say? Uh, uh, what did you say? I guess in, 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 that first touchdown. So I'm glad you could score. He goes, I've known I can score all along. I said, we'll do it more. And I think he did it one more time after that. Well, uh, when, uh, when you talked about him at, uh, at, at the Big 12 Media Days back in July, you know, I, you know, I, I think you said he was the most, or one of the most dynamic guys who had coached in your time here. Um, when you said that, did you have this kind of, uh, uh, did you have this kind of, uh, of, uh, the season with him getting 1,200 yards through 10 games and doing what he has. Did you have this kind of a season in mind? I didn't know if he had the ability to be able to do it consistently like that. I didn't know we were going to be averaging 50 rushes a game either. Uh, you know, so that that's that's what we're doing offensively has helped Wendell as well. Uh, I, I knew he was a great back. I mean, you know, he, that's why he was at media days. Uh, be able to do it consistently over ten games now has been um, ha has been fun to watch. You know, proud of him for that. I got no reason to think he's not going to continue to do that. You know, the, the versatility is what has always stood out with him, and you know, being so important, being a run between the tackles guy has has diminished some of those those ways that we've used him because we haven't had to. Um, and he's been able to handle it. So it, it, it hasn't turned out exactly like I thought it would, but not surprised of his success at all. And now that you have um, rushed the ball 50 times per game or whatever, do you think big picture-wise this gives you guys the best chance to win the conference or compete for a conference title going forward? Yeah, I, absolutely. You know, I mean, absolutely. we got we got to continue – to you know, run the ball effectively, but but continue to get better intermediate passing games as opposed you know in addition to that with with big play potential. You know we missed four over the top throws, and you know that the, the the wind has something to do with it. You can say it does, or you can say it doesn't. I mean it does. I mean we were it's the first time I told Skyler that there's you can't you can't overthrow a number one or number five. And he hadn't all year. Well, when we had that wind behind him, those things sailed. So, you know, being able to uh, ground it out like we have here recently, you know, m makes a difference in being able to win those games. There's no question. But then you're going to have those times where you've got to hit that big play and you've got to be good in the intermediate passing game. We're, we're not where I, 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 I feel like we should be or will be when it comes to that. Moving forward, this week, next week, bowl game, you know, next year. And how 
how would you characterize the senior class as a as a group and, and what they've been through? I mean, it, it seems to me like the senior class has gone through a lot injury wise and the, and the likes. Committed. Uh, you know, committed more than anything, committed to uh, WVU, committed to being a Mountaineer, uh, this program. Uh, they're, they're proud of where they're at, and, and, and you know, they're, they're a close, tight-knit knit senior class. So I think 20 years from now, you'll, you'll see a lot of these guys coming back, hanging out together. <laughs> and they have, they're, re they're resilient, uh, you know, from overcoming some of the injuries that they've overcame is big. Um, but they, they're, they're the inspiration for our whole team right now. They're, they're the backbone with, with, you know, going back from coaching changes to transition, conference transitions, um, you know, developing the program. It's meant a lot to them. It's meant a lot to me that, that, that they've stuck it out and they've, they've never wavered and they've continued to work their tail off each and every, each and every day. So I'm proud of this class. Yeah, you mentioned it a little bit, uh, this being one of the best weeks for football because there's no distractions. But, you know, obviously these guys are here. They're locked in. They can't go home to their families for Thanksgiving. What do you do? Do you have any kind of team dinner? Do they go to position coaches' houses for Thanksgiving? <laughs> yeah, they're different things. Uh, there's different things. We'll go to a movie tomorrow just to kill, you know, do a, you know, as something as a group. Uh, we'll have a family Thanksgiving dinner here on Wednesday where, you know they're all here, and coaches and families and stuff will be here as well. Uh, I let them go where they want to on Thursday. <laughs> you know, some of them will go home. You know, if you can, you know, they'll get about 24 hours off from Thursday when we're done here until Friday, where we reconvene and go through a Friday schedule where we travel and all that. So a lot of them will go home. A lot of them will have their own dinner. Uh, uh, each and every one, all the coaches will have their own dinners, and there'll be players go to different houses and stuff like that. So we'll make sure that the, every one of them has a place to go. Uh, but we'll have our own dinner on Thursday, on, on Wednesday, because I, I want to let guys go. If they want to be able to go, they can go. And then Friday, back to more business as usual. You said a, a lack of distractions during this week. I, how do you? Prevent players from finding their own distractions. Yeah, if you're going to worry about that, then you got to worry about that every day. You know, so our, our guys are pretty in tune with what what this make week uh, you know means, and you know all their families will be coming in on Thursday. Most of them anyway. You know, come in Thursday or Friday. You know, so got a little extra time to be able to spend time with their families and stuff, and then. You know, Saturday obviously family day or a, a senior day with the families, and you know, be able to spend time with them after uh, Saturday as well. And then Sunday we'll be back to work. You know, got another game after that. Okay, thanks, Coach. Thank you.